up here, you wanna come out? Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out, whoa, poke it out. What's up everyone? So as you can tell by the fact that there is no lighting at all, uh, it's a bit late right now and it's just kind of not in my best interest to pull out the light and, and get everything set up. I just wanted to record a little bit more natural and just, you know, not have to deal with all of that setting up and stuff. So apologies if it is a little dark. It will get brighter whenever I end up opening my browser and actually getting the, like the, the notes out so I can read and, and kind of have the stats all right there. So apologies for that but i don't think anyone really cares uh today we're going to be doing saints vs panthers key matchups to watch and now before i get into the video i'd like to let you guys know that one it is three in the morning and i couldn't sleep i'm kind of waiting for my sister uh she's and she's getting on she's going to atlanta to get on her plane back to uh i think it's i i don't know because she just got stationed there it's um it's one of those weird states but she's gonna go there and then um it's Virginia. She's going to go to Virginia, and then that's that. So I'm waiting to say bye to her, and then, you know, uh, I'll go to sleep. But until then, we do. I was just going to be productive and get a video out of the way. And this is the one that we're going to be doing, the key matchups to watch. Now, before I get started, I will let you guys know yet again that I did make a Patreon. If you would like to go throw a couple bucks my way, just for the betterness of the channel, literally anything that goes to the Patreon is only for YouTube supplies. Uh, my YouTube revenue, I use a little bit for stuff I need for myself as well as my channel, but um, the Patreon stuff will go strictly towards YouTube setup and cameras and microphones and anything I need for the desk, lighting, anything like that, stuff for the background. So if you guys would like to go ahead and donate to the Patreon, the link is in the description. But besides that, let's go ahead and get into the video. I just launched the Patreon again like a day ago, so there are no donations. If you'd like to be, if you'd like to be the first, the link is in the description. Now, let's go ahead and move to the first matchup to watch that I would like to talk about. And wow, that is bright. That is Marshawn Lattimore versus DJ Moore. Now, this is a, this is only an assumption. I can only assume there will be a switch in coverage on DJ Moore because of the fact Marshawn Lattimore missed last game versus the Carolina Panthers. PJ Williams was forced to cover the boundary, which placed him as a primary defensive back on DJ Moore in most situations. Now, it wasn't that PJ allowed a ton of receptions. Uh, he didn't. He didn't allow a ton of receptions. DJ Moore totaled six receptions, but for 126 yards and two touchdowns. It was genuinely hard to watch. DJ Moore absolutely abused PJ Williams deep. He was just throwing him around, getting wide open. DJ Moore notched a 51-yard touchdown reception and also broke three for a 52-yard catch and run. The Saints secondary is extremely injured, but Marshawn Lattimore is completely healthy. Expect Lattimore to cover DJ, especially because of what happened last time these two teams faced off. Having DJ Moore break out for 126 yards and two touchdowns, which is still his best game of the season by far up until this point is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot see Sean Payton st or Dennis Allen sticking PJ Williams on DJ Moore again. That is literally just a recipe for disaster. Now, I don't think PJ Williams is a terrible corner. He does piss me off at points. He is a little bit stupid at some points, but he is actually a very good slot corner. If you put him in the slot, he'll do his job, but the second he hits the boundary, he sucks. So just keep him in the slot. Don't make him play outside. We'll be perfectly fine. So Marshawn Lattimore being the one to cover DJ Moore in this scenario. Here are his stats for the season. Marshawn Lattimore has target, been targeted 73 times, but has only allowed 40 of those to be completed. Marshawn Lattimore is allowing a team low 51.2% of passes his way to be completed. He has rallied a career low 68.5 pro football focus grade, even though I think he's playing more complete than any other year before now of course he isn't getting the interceptions that he's used to but it just seems like he's never at fault for any major gains or major kinks or major problems in the secondary he's usually the one cleaning up other people's messes and it's like he always does his job amari cooper mike evans julio jones are just a couple of names that just got completely wiped all out of the game they weren't game changers marshawn Lattimore is still definitely a lockdown corner but he does have a pretty big test this week in dj moore 
because of Marshawn always, you know, shadowing the best receiver on a team, he's always placed in positions to go against big tests, and there's that is no exception here. DJ Moore has had a very impressive season, especially taking his quarterback situation into account. He's played with Kyle Allen and Will Greer, who is coming off of a three interception performance against the Indianapolis Colts. DJ's stats for the season read as follows. 87 receptions, 1,175 yards, and 4 touchdowns, which is extremely solid. He's been well this year, but surprisingly, he only had one reception for one yard against the Indianapolis Colts last week. That's a new low. Um, I think that Marshawn Lattimore fares well in this matchup. Of course, when you look at it in the you know stats category, Marshawn Lattimore does have the edge. This dude has locked up some of the best in the game. Mike Evans, who was one of the top five yards leaders in the league before leaving with a hamstring injury, um, he locked him out. He, he completely nothing on the stat sheet. So I'm definitely never going to be not confident in Marshawn Lattimore. I think DJ Moore is a young wide receiver as well as Marshawn Lattimore is a young defensive back. So, so really neither of them have a huge amount of... <coughs> excuse me, veteran knowledge on each other. So it's a pretty even matchup, but Marshawn Lattimore has locked up some of the best. I don't think DJ Moore will be any different from that. So yeah, definitely be look on, uh, on the lookout for that. DJ Moore coming back from a 126 yard, two touchdown game to face us for the second time. Will it be different now that Marshawn Lattimore is shadowing him? The next thing I'd like to talk about is something very interesting, and that is Alvin Kamara versus the Carolina Panthers run defense. So this one's going to be pretty short and sweet. It's kind of just my thoughts and my opinion on this whole thing. I said this. This was, I, I'm pretty sure, Alvin Kamara versus either Luke Keekley or the Carolina Panthers run defense was a big uh, topic for the matchups to watch video last time we faced the Carolina Panthers. But they've been struggling this year with run defense, extremely bad to say the least. Right now, they're, they're, they're sporting an abysmal 31st ranked run defense in the league. This comes in perfect timing for star running back Alvin Kamara, who has been battling the same ankle and knee injuries that have been plaguing him since week 7, effectively sidelining him for week 7 and week 8. He's finally appearing to, to, to get back to his old ways. He's looking like himself again. After heating up and telling the media he's getting closer and closer to being 100%, Kamara has the treat to play a run defense that's allowing an average of 145 yards per game. I think Kamara will have a heyday. Kamara's stats versus Tennessee reads like this. 11 rushes, 80 yards, 2 touchdowns. That may sound like an average game for him based on his state on the stigma he's built of being this all out star studded running back who can break any tackle. But those touchdowns were the first he scored since week three. So it definitely means a lot for him to get back in the end zone. That wasn't a mediocre game. That was a resurgence game. Alvin Kamara definitely put his stamp on the offense yet again. It was really nice to see the big three going. Uh, Drew Brees, Michael Thomas, and Alvin Kamara all showed out. It was looking like what we, we were used to seeing years past, but with a little bit of Jared Cook and Traquan Smith sprinkled in there as well. So, I think... Uh, like Alvin Kamara did against Tennessee, he will have a big day against the Carolina Panthers. I don't see anyone on that run defense stopping him. If you go ahead and look at the film of Alvin Kamara against the Carolina Panthers, yeah, he only had 11 rushes for 50 yards or something like that. He still looked extremely fluid. If he was given more opportunities in that game, I'm sure he would have had a lot more production, but Alvin Kamara was focused, or not Alvin Kamara, Sean Payton was focusing on Latavius Murray as he showed in the beginning of the game they had no answer for him he broke off for a very large touchdown run so if Alvin Kamara can get himself involved early and set the tone for the rest of the game that could be a huge thing right there I do think Alvin Kamara does bully this Carolina Panthers run defense I don't think they stand a chance I think we see past Alvin Kamara yet again in ways that we haven't seen in a very 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 long time I'm talking 100 plus yards two touchdowns baby maybe a couple of receptions in there as well who knows? So now I would like to talk about the last thing, and this one's a bit of a, of a coin flip for me. It's the New Orleans Saints offensive line versus the Carolina Panthers defensive line. The New Orleans Saints have a huge test this week against the best pass rush in football. Yeah, I said it. The Carolina Panthers are currently leading the league with 52 sacks on the season, most in the NFL. 
The Saints offensive line, on the other hand, is ranked third best in the league, only behind Dallas and Los Angeles, but sadly, they have not been at full strength, full strength for weeks. Appearing on the early injury report are two starting offensive linemen for New Orleans, both limited, Andrus Pete, who's working back from a broken forearm, and Larry Warford with his knee injury. The Saints offensive line can very much still slow people down, holding opposing defenses to only 24 sacks on the year. Despite multiple injuries to the offensive line, players like Teron Armstead, Larry Warford, Andrus Pete, so many offensive linemen going down at different points during the year, We've only allowed 24 sacks on the season, which, like I said, third best in the league. Most games are won in the trenches. Will the offensive line be able to create running lanes for Alvin Kamara to get him involved in the offense? Will they be able to protect Drew Brees against the best pass, pass rush in football? Those, are my, in my opinion, are the questions that will win or lose the Saints the game this week. That's just how I feel about it. Can the offensive line stop that pass rush of Carolina? 42 sack or 52 sacks on the year. Extremely dominant. I don't know. I, I, I really don't. But it's definitely going to be fun to watch. The New Orleans Saints have quieted some extremely good defensive lines this year. San Francisco and Carolina a couple weeks ago being uh, just a few that come off the top of my head. So... Those are my matchups to watch. If there's anything I missed, go ahead and comment down in the comment section below. I appreciate that so much. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know. Like I said, no forcing here, but the Patreon is in the description if you guys feel like it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions or things I missed out on, go ahead and comment them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you boys in the next one. Falling like Barkley, wrist so sparkly, internet surfing, feel like I Carly.